Hello everyone and welcome to our video on transport in plants. What we're going to be doing in this video is the first one in our plant transport section and we're going to be having a look at three of those statements from the specification. So need for transport systems in our multicellular plants, the structure and function of the vascular system and then the examination and drawing of those stained sections of plant tissue. The first one then is this whole idea of a need for a transport system in our plants. Now, what this does is it comes back to that basic idea of surface area to volume ratio. And quite simply, if we've got a larger plant, then it's going to have a smaller surface area to volume ratio. So what that actually means in practice for our little plant is that the substances that it's trying to actually transport to get them to all of those cells will have to move over these large distances. If you think about how far it is from the roots of a tree right the way to the very top leaves, it's quite some way. So what we find is diffusion itself would be too slow to actually meet the needs of that plant. So therefore they need a specialist transport system. So they're going to need this transport system in order to move those water and ions from the roots up to the leaves. They're going to need a transport system to move the sucrose, and we describe that as going from the source to the sink, and also to move hormones from the site that they're produced to the site where they will have their action. So basically we've got those three different requirements for the transport system there. In terms of oxygen and the reason that we don't mention that as being something that requires this specialist transport system is because our plants aren't really metabolically active, not overly so anyway. So what we find is that diffusion is going to be sufficient to meet those demands for oxygen because our plants aren't really moving anywhere. It's not like they're upping roots and running down the road or anything. So they don't have these high demands for things like ATP. So because of that, they're less metabolically active than things like animals, and therefore they've got lower demands for oxygen. So diffusion is going to be fast enough to meet those demands. If we now move on to consider what this transport system is in our plants, then basically we've got this specialized vascular tissue made up of two hopefully familiar names, xylem, all to do with transporting the water and mineral ions up the plant, and our phloem, transporting those assimilates both up and down the plant. So do remember the names of these two different plant transport tissues, xylem and phloem. Remember what they transport and the direction. Now I can tell you the same thing I'd give to my GCSE students here to help them remember when we're thinking about our xylem, literally just go with the alphabet. So we've got water, W, in the xylem, X, Y. So you've literally got water in xylem and of course there's mineral ions dissolved in it as well. But water only moves up, whereas the phloem will transport those assimilates up and down the plant depending on the need. When we actually think about one of these key groups of plants, which are called these dicotyledonous plants, and you can see what we mean by a dicotyledonous plant at the bottom here, is that basically they've got two of these structures called cotyledons, hence dicotyledon, okay? Di meaning two. They've got these vascular bundles made up of the xylem and the phloem. There may also be some other tissues present, which are all to do with providing strength and support. But on the most part, these vascular tissues are xylem and phloem. Depending on where we are in the plant is going to determine the actual location of these vascular bundles. So let's start off with the roots then. So in the root, the vascular bundle is actually found in the center of the root itself. If we have a little look at the diagram on the right, first of all, this makes it a little bit easier to see. So what we're going to start off with is this little X shape. So this X shape in the center here is the xylem. Now, it's not always X shaped, but it is frequently X shaped. It is, however, always in that central position. 
Then if we have a little look, we've got these little blue sections. So between those little arms of the bits of the X for the xylem, we have got the phloem in those four regions. So basically xylem is that central X and then between the arms of the X, we've got our flow and the little blue bits on that diagram. The reason that we have our vascular bundles in the center of the root there is all to do with giving that root the ability to withstand those forces that it's going to be exposed to. Now, obviously the root is buried in the soil. And when we're talking about the motion the plant is going to experience through wind, etc., there's going to be a certain amount of pull on those roots. So we've got to be able to withstand that force of pulling and not just have it snap. And this is what the vascular bundle does by being in the center. The second thing we need to be able to do here before we leave this little slide is look at the microscope image. These come up on the exam paper every once in a while where you're going to be given one of these images from a light microscope and you'll be asked to identify a particular tissue. So again, it's the same thing. We're looking at a root. So our xylem is going to be in the middle and you can see that the diagram is a slight simplification with the X. You can still make out the fact it has this central core and then these little arms sticking out but you're always going to be able to spot the xylem because they kind of look like just little circles really. Now the xylem itself, remember, is a tube because we've removed all of those end walls. So when you're looking at obviously a little slice through, you would expect it to look kind of like a hole with just an outer wall, which is what we see. If you can identify the xylem, then you know that the phloem is between those arms then you can pick out the phloem. So if we have a little look at it, all of these bits would be our little xylem. I'm doing a very quick little sketch around it. And what we then find is between the arms, we've got these little pockets, which are going to be our phloem. So basically, if you can remember where the xylem is, you can then identify where the phloem is going to be. So the little diagram is going to help you, but do make sure you have a look at the microscope images as well. What we then find is around the vascular bundle, we've got this thing called the endodermis. So if we have a little look, I'll just, oh dear, terrible drawing around it. But if we draw around here and then around this side of it, that little layer of cells there is our endodermis. So you can see it basically forms a little circle around the vascular bundle. Now within that, we are going to find the pericycle and that's just got the merry stem cells. They're not going to ask you to label the pericycle on there, but just be aware that we do have merry stem cells located in that region. If we move to our next part of the plant now, the stem, then the vascular bundles are actually found near the outer edge. So when we're actually looking at our little stem, if we've taken a little slice through, then what we're going to find is our vascular bundles basically arranged in a little circle around the outer edge. We get a bit of variation here in the type of plant. If we've got non woody plants or young woody plants, then the bundles are going to be separated from one another. If we're looking at the older woody plants, think a tree, they will just form this continuous ring of vascular tissue that's located just underneath the bark itself. And this is why you don't just go and cut these rings around trees. If you do that, you're obviously going to basically create a break in all the vascular tissue and therefore prevent the plant from being able to transport substances, therefore killing the plant. Don't do that. Now, the reason that we arrange the vascular bundles in this particular way in the stem is still to provide strength, but it's also to give it that flexibility in the stem because when it's above ground, it's obviously going to be blowing in the wind. You don't want it to be overly rigid. Otherwise, if a strong enough gust of wind blows, it would just snap it. So we need that flexibility to allow it to have that motion with the environmental conditions. But obviously it's got to be strong enough to support the general mass of the plant above. 
let's have a little look at the vascular bundles themselves then. So again, we'll start off with a little diagram form first of all. So we can see we've got our little vascular bundles all arranged in a little ring near the outside of the stem itself. When we're trying to identify where the xylem is and where the phloem is, xylem is always found on the inside to so the pink bits on the diagram and the phloem is closer to the outside, so the bluish coloured bits on that diagram. Between the xylem and the phloem, we actually have this layer called cambium. Now the cambium itself is made up of meristem cells and that's important because a meristem cell, remember, is undifferentiated and it's therefore going to be able to produce new xylem and phloem cells when they differentiate into those specific cell types. So again, if we have a little look, obviously we've got the microscope image, not very zoomed in on the left hand side there. What we're going to do though is we're going to have a look at the zoomed in section just at the bottom here. So what we have said is we are going to have our xylem on the inside. OK, so basically here we can see our little pockets of xylem. So there's another one there. Here's one here. So basically the bits in the red are the bits of xylem there that we can see. Then the bits in blue are going to be our phloem and they're closer to the outside of our actual stem there. So just in those areas, we have the phloem. And then basically the cambium is this little region between the two. And as we said, this cambium is going to be containing these meristem cells. So xylem closer to the center, then we go to the cambium and finally the phloem closest to the outside when we're talking about the stem. Final structure we need to know about is in the leaf. Now, in the leaf, if you just look at a leaf, you are going to be able to pick out these little veins basically running across the surface. And that is the vascular bundle. So that midrib, the bit that runs down the center of the actual leaf itself, and those little branching veins coming off the side, those are the vascular bundles. So again, we've got a little microscope image just here to have a little look at so we can identify. The xylem is going to be in that upper region so closer to the top of the leaf so if we have a little look we can see this little section here is our xylem so closer to the upper surface of the leaf because this bit here is the upper epidermis and therefore our xylem is arranged closer to that structure the phloem is going to be the region beneath it so here is our phloem underneath so basically what we have here then is a nice simple way that we can obviously identify those key bits. If you remember that the xylem always looks kind of like you're looking at a drinking straw from above when you were looking at any of these little microscope images, that's going to help you to pick it out. Obviously you'll be able to identify the vascular bundles in any of these structures. And then if you remember the orientation of xylem and phloem as to whether it's closer to the top, close to the middle, etc., you are going to be able to pick it out on any image they give you. They're not going to try to trick you with this. It will usually be quite clear from the image you are given. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can see when we next upload a video. And of course, head on over to the A-Level website where you can find a range of other resources designed to help you with your A-level biology studies.